How you doing, everybody? It's been a while since I made a video. I'm up at my, uh, well, it was my family farm. My son owns it now. He has eight children. So if you hear some uh, pigs or animals in the background, that's what they are. Uh, I was up here for a wedding. I planned on coming down two weeks ago, but then uh, uh, that storm hit North Carolina. I didn't want to drive through there, and then... Uh, we're just getting over another hurricane that hit in Florida. So I've been kind of like busy. I'll tell you what, hold fast, gang. You know, separate yourself. Be holy. That's what the word holy means, be separate. Guys, this party's wrapping up really, really quick. The sheep and the goats are getting separated. And you're able to tell who truly loves Jesus Christ. All right. I don't care, Hindu, Muslim, Confucius, it's all deceptions. It's all lies. I don't care about respecting any other religion, no. I don't respect something that isn't of the cross. I just don't. I, I just don't. Being a Christian doesn't mean respecting other religions. It means respecting your fellow man, but not respecting their beliefs. I don't respect things that are wrong, and that's just the way the Lord has it in my heart. Now, how do I have the faith to even say that? You might say, who is he to put his religion, his beliefs above somebody else's? Well, all I could tell you, I got reborn. I got saved from above. It didn't come from my parents. It didn't come from a church. It didn't come from a card. It didn't come from religion. It didn't come from two people knocking on my door and sitting and giving me a magazine. No. It came from above, kind of like what happened to Paul. And I'm not saying it happens like that to everybody. But when that does happen to you, and maybe that's what it took. Maybe I was such a wretch that the Lord had to intervene and literally give me a, a Saul experience where I got knocked off a horse and I entered in a total different realm. But I tell you what, we've respected too far many things other than the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no room for tolerance. No, there isn't. There's only one. The first commandment, there is only one God. And there is only one Lord. And we know of the Father through his Son. And yes, Jesus was a man who walked this earth, but it's only because to fulfill a plan of his sacrifice. He was the Word of God, which means he was God, which means he came from God. And he became flesh. But he wasn't conceived of a, of a woman. He was conceived of a man born of a woman, born under the law. Under the law means, meaning he had to deal with all the same things we have to deal with, even the laws of gravity, the laws of heat and cold, the laws of humanity outside of God. He was spit on. He was crucified. Crown of thorns put on his head. What? What wrong did he do? This is how insane the world was. And I'm not so sure these people were even human. You know, two weeks before he got crucified, you know what he did? He rose Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus made sure he was dead. It was a four-day experience in that grave, and he stunk. And instead of the Pharisees and the chief priests saying, My goodness, this miracle's impossible. This has to be God. This is something. No, they didn't even question him. Immediately they started plans to kill Jesus. And not only kill Jesus, but to kill Lazarus. So we aren't dealing with a world down here that has any religious, spiritual, common sense, even though everything is going to die and be judged. So tr forget about trying to use your human reasoning to reason anything. Forget about use, using your carnal knowledge to swerve anybody's attitude. Far more action has to take place on your knees so you could literally fight against these spiritual demons in the war we're truly in that's not a flesh and blood battle but the lord tells us in the old testament his chosen people which, which i believe we are the true jews a jew whose heart is circumcised there are other jews that call themselves jews but they are not they are the synagogues of satan revelations 2 9 revelations 3 9 and we're seeing their fruits as far as I'm concerned now. But you and I, being the true Jews, read the last verse in Romans 2. Whose heart is circumcised. Heart is pulled back. Has your heart been circumcised? 
It's not written in the law. It's not something that you have to go to a book to read. The laws of God are now written on your heart. And now the true communion isn't a bread wafer. If you want to do that in, in, you know, in remembrance of the Lord, that's fine. But the true communion is a daily you and Jesus eating the bread that came from above. Yes, the true baptism is what Paul said, or what uh, John the Baptist said. One comes after me that's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. When you get washed and cleansed by the Holy Spirit and a conviction comes on you, you know it didn't come from a ritual. Yes. The true sacrifice is the altar on your heart, not a physical altar made of wood that's going to burn and rot someday. But you are the temple, the altar is in you, and you have to be the living sacrifice that's put on that altar each and every day when you choose righteousness by the grace of God, by his conviction, over sin. Time is short. Get ready. He's coming back. And regardless if he comes back or you go to meet him in the next five minutes, the thing is you and I are on a specified time. So redeem the time. And it seems like it's wrapping up. And don't give in. Don't give in to the politics. Don't give in to anything. Because we're dealing with a lot of reprobates. We're dealing with a lot of depraved minds that want to bring us into their fold. Little by little. Like a ship getting sent out to sea. No. Stand on the rock. Stand on the foundation of Jesus Christ and what he taught. And don't let this world define what love is. Don't let this world define what kindness is. Love and kindness is choosing the Lord Jesus Christ, standing what he says, being obedient to him, loving him with all your heart and soul, and then loving your neighbor as yourself. There is only one way to, to salvation, gang. And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, meaning what he did spiritually for us, meaning that it's a spiritual battle, meaning we're no longer to know him after the flesh. And God is a spirit that wants to live inside of you. And God is seeking those, seeking those who wish to worship him in spirit, not in flesh, rituals, and traditions, but in spirit and in truth, not in fleshly hypocrisy. But whether you, amongst a thousand people or alone in your closet, you still believe the same things. Well, God bless you. Stay firm. Stay in the Lord. And amen.